I felt the need to do a video here today because the, the more and more I look into these home hand sanitizer solutions with everything going on these days, the more and more I realize just how wrong a lot of these are. Some of them are claiming 60% alcohol or better, and that's supposed to be 60% volume per volume. So if you they all they tell you is to use rubbing alcohol. They're telling you to you know put one third whatever else is it, it is and then two thirds rubbing alcohol which should bring it to about 66 percent that's only if you're using a hundred percent or 99.8 percent lab pharmaceutical grade isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol if you're using your standard pharmacy brand then it's most likely 70 maybe 91 percent but you got to compensate for that extra 30 percent of water in that 70 percent solution that's not volume per volume in addition to that it's not 60% for isopropyl alcohol, it's 70% to 80% for isopropyl alcohol. 60% only equates to working with ethanol alcohol. So there's, there's a lot of not enough detail, uh, misconceptions, and just people making hand sanitizer that honestly would not work for what you're looking to kill these days. What we have here is a $7 hydrometer, this came by itself for $7. And then I have this kit here, which was a beer kit for measuring the alcohol content in your beer mash and what have you. Uh, I don't need a beer hydrometer, but for the price, you got a microfiber cloth, you got a cleaning brush, you got an all bar silic glass test vial to use your hydrometer in and $11. So I could not find this by itself, not any decent quality. I found ones with plastic bases, which have a tendency to tip and fall. This has a glass base. It's all bar silic. It's crystal clear once it's cleaned correctly. For $11, this by itself, I find on Amazon maybe $25 to $35. So for $11, I'll take the whole kit. I'll take the cleaning brush, I'll take the milk fiber cloth and everything. $18, about $18, I guess after tax you're actually at a point where you can actually test your hand sanitizer solution and make sure it's accurate. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to do a baseline. I want to make sure that this is accurate. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix up a 75% rubbing alcohol with 25% distilled water. This way, I can ensure that this is reading correctly. Now, also, a lot of people don't read the instructions that are folded in the little plastic case that it comes in. It gives you a variance of degrees for anything over 50 proof. It tells you based on temperature, let's say 70 degrees is minus four of your reading. So you have to take four off of this reading. What they don't tell you on this little instruction guide about taking four off that reading is they're not talking about your ambient home temperature, which my home temperature is probably about 74. They're talking about the actual liquid now technically the liquid should be all 74 but everybody's air conditioner varies and everybody's heat varies a couple of degrees and the liquids don't cool or heat up as fast as the ambient temperature does i did a, a test earlier before i started this video with the fluke to make sure it was on par and the fluke was on par with the same thing that my brian was telling me as far as the temperature goes uh, and if I measured just the ambient temperature with the fluke just sitting in the probe out for five minutes, it was on par with my flare. So I'm pretty sure that's all accurate. And what I did is I just took a little food temperature gauge here. And with that, I was able to confirm that the measurement in the water that I was testing earlier is the same as what the fluke was telling me and everything. So I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty secure in this. You want to make sure that this is also at room, your hydrometer is also at room temperature. So we're going to do 134 milliliters total, which will give me 100.5 or 75% of rubbing alcohol and 33.5 or 25% of distilled water. So this is 75% volume per volume and 25% volume per volume. And that's based off of the fact that I'm using a laboratory quality 99% isopropyl alcohol. So let's go ahead and test that out and make sure that we have everything accurate. So I want 100.5 of the rubbing alcohol. Of course, when you're eyeing measurements, you're not gonna get exactly on.
Although that is pretty darn close. That's actually perfect. With a few drops, always happens with isopropyl alcohol. The density of isopropyl alcohol actually weighs less, and these things are more designed to pour, you know, your little measuring cups and everything are more designed to pour water. Water weighs more than methyl, ethanol, and isopropyl alcohol. Let me wipe this up. Now for 33.5. Well, the 33 kind of throws you off on, on the water because water does weigh in at a good scale measurement of one gram. So one gram of water actually equals one milliliter. This only applies to water, like I said. Alcohols actually weigh less. So we'll tear this off, and this way I should be able to get actual 33, maybe even 33 and a half with a few drops. Now, when you're following the World Health Organization's instructions for making this, it says you have a good plus or minus five variants. So it doesn't need to be exact. I'm gonna use this bottle because we have to make sure this is thoroughly mixed. This is an empty isopropyl alcohol bottle that was uh, I keep them around after the empty. I let them air dry, keep the cap off. So it's very sterile. And then put the cap back on. Now let's let the bubbles settle. Those bubbles will cause the hydrometer to actually lift up. So if you could take a closer look in the darker background, you'll see all those bubbles floating up. You want all those bubbles to float up as much as possible. It might take about a minute or so. Not too much time out of your day. So I'm only using this because this is easier to see on video. One thing I'm gonna do is actually balance the temperature of the liquids with the hydrometer. So now the bubbles are clear, go ahead and put the hydrometer in. If I put these two items in. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this real quick. You can see we're at 75.2. If I come around here, I don't know if I can focus in on that. Right in between the 70 and the 80. So yeah, definitely agrees. I'd call that 75. So at 75, according to the scale, or 50 or higher proof, which in this case this is 75. You don't want to use the trails. It says minus 6 at 75. And everything is agreeing with each other. This is saying 75 too. So let's see where we're at. Spin it, make sure we're not touching the walls. We got a picture of this. So after taking that picture, I would definitely say that's 83. At 75 degrees, minus six, would be 77. Now the World Health Organization did mention that if you're measuring isopropyl alcohol, their numbers actually came out plus two above the 75 also. And I'm fine with that. They got the same plus two I got. So for right now, I'm going to set up so we can actually make a batch. Now that we know our correction factor is probably off by about two, I can get an accurate measurement of the isopropyl alcohol. That's in the final solution once everything's done. Let me go ahead and set that up.